are there particular kinds of circumstances where a novice data scientist might use a regression model, but there's something, you know, it wasn't the right choice. Like there's, there's something about the real world where even though they can apply regression, um, it, it, it will give wacky results. Okay, yeah, sure. This is uh, assumptions of linear regression. So this is specifically to linear regression. It uh, oh, wouldn't, okay, wouldn't apply to like uh, logistic regression, which would be a classification type model. But for a linear regression, um, there's five main assumptions. And I love this. Like I spent a few days preparing this uh, tutorial. And um, I loved it because uh, wherever, like whenever you search online, like you get different results. Some people say there's six or seven assumptions. There's some people say there's five. Some people say these assumptions, some people say other assumptions. So there's not like one independent source of truth of, of, for this um, um, tutorial. And I couldn't find a really high quality video. So I am very excited about like what we created here. Um, and basically there's five assumptions of linear regression that I'll outline now. We'll go through them quite quickly. Um, we'll share a link in the, for the show notes. Like we created a cheat sheet that people can download for these assumptions of linear regression. So people can go to the show notes and just get it there it's like a nice one page pdf that you can download keep and even print um so assumption number one is linearity so basically we're not going to go into how to do all of these things programmatically or how to check these assumptions you know on a mathematical basis we'll be talking about like eyeballing your data and just gauging from that so when you look at your data if you want to apply like a multiple linear regression or linear regression um, when you look at your data, you should see generally like a linear relationship. Like it should look like a linear relationship too. If it looks something like a very different, like um, like a I don't know, like an exponential relationship or a, um, um, I don't know, like basically anything but a linear kind of chart, probably you shouldn't be applying linear regression to it because you get incorrect conclusions. Now, assumption number two is homoscedasticity. Very cool word, but basically means equal variance. So when you look at your data, if you imagine like a um, like a just a line chart with with a horizontal, like it's not a horizontal, like a slightly sloped trend, and your data, like just imagine scatter plot going along this. Uh, your 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 points of your data are scattered along this uh, sloped trend line. That's your kind of data that you're applying your linear regression to. You don't want to see that uh, data in a cone kind of shape. You don't want the space between the data points and your presumed trend line to be increasing over as you progress further to the right or decreasing as you progress further to the right. If you see a cone shape, that means uh, that variance is dependent on uh, the independent variable, and that's not good. That's uh, not homoscedastic data, so you, you don't want to be applying linear regression to that. Then assumption number three is multivariate normality. You basically, if you if you have your um line uh assumed trend line and if you look along the line like imagine you're looking along the line and you have data your data points to the right and to the left you want them to be um normally uh distant from this line so you want kind of normal distribution around this line if you see something else um again that wouldn't be a good candidate for linear regression number four is independence of observations which also includes the uh, you might see an assumption called no autocorrelation in other sources. And that basically means your data points should be independent of each other. You can't have a situation where one uh, data point is is uh, affecting the next data point, affecting the next data point, and so on. A classic example of this is the stock market. Like this in the stock market, data points and you know, the price to right now affects the price in the next hour, affects the price in the next hour, and so on. So they're not independent shouldn't be applying a linear regression <laughs> to modeling the stock market. You probably won't get the best outcomes. Um, and the fifth final assumption is lack of multicollinearity. You don't want your um, uh, independent variables to be uh, correlated. You want them to be uncorrelated as much as possible because if they are correlated, um, you can still run a, a linear regression. Problem is that your coefficients um, will not be very reliable. Um, okay, we can go into detail on that, but we won't. Basically, coefficients can um, you know vary because you have you imagine just having the same variable in twice in your linear regression, then the coefficients don't know what to do. Which one should be bigger? Which one should be smaller? So coefficients won't be very reliable. You won't be able to 
uh, predict um, the impact of each variable based on the coefficients. There's one more. There's a, like the Phi's assumption. There's a sixth one, but it's not an assumption. It's more of a check. You should always check for outliers. Uh, if your uh, data set has outliers, you should decide for yourself if you want to model it with the outliers or if you want to remove the outliers before modeling. Some sources will include that as a assumption. It's not actually an assumption. It's more of a check. So yeah, once again, it's quite hard to visualize these things on a podcast. We ran through them quite quickly. Uh, there's going to be a PDF in the show notes. Please go ahead and download it. Um, you know, it's it's for your use there. We want to we want people to be aware of these assumptions before you use linear regressions.